Hello, my name is Persephone and I welcome you to my psyche. I know it has been about a month or over a month that I have recorded anything or posted anything, but I have realized that it's always healthy to take time for yourself, take time and space for yourself when you're processing something, going through something in your personal life, it is okay to take this space, it is okay to remove that pressure of productivity. Sometimes I have learned in my journey that giving myself the break, even if it is unprecedented, will enhance my productivity, will enhance my confidence, will enhance my healing. So with that being said, today I will bring to you a topic that I practice on an everyday basis, I talk to my friends about and I cultivate as a part of my, my prayer and my existence and within my lifestyle I try to inculcate these practices to enhance my connection with myself and to feel who I am more closely rather than sinking in to the projection of everybody around me and viewing myself through the lenses of those projections I practice these things that I'm about to share with you. So without further ado, let's get right into it. Number one, exploring the creativity of your inner child. By exploring the creativity of our inner child, we can explore our true nature. One of the examples in which I do this is connecting back to the activities and connecting back to the girl that I was when I was a child and going back into that portal I always find myself getting entranced by by forests, trees, nature, talking to the birds, talking to the air around me, talking to leaves T looking at the sky, talking to the stars all the time. As a girl, as a little girl, I would do it. Um, I would collect stones lying on the side of the road or in forests and bring them home. I would collect twigs and leaves and dried flowers. And, and so these are a few things that I have welcomed as a part of my daily life while growing up while I have evolved into the person that I am today, I still carry within me, within my heart, within my lifestyle, these, these magical nuances of who I was as a little girl and I try to always keep that with me. And as I grow older, right now in my late 20s, I realize that it's it still helps me to know myself so much more deeply when I connect to my inner child and explore my desires from that point of view of who I used to be and how I used to, to view the world as a little girl. Number two, developing a communication with one's own self. Having an inner dialogue with our own minds, our own thoughts, our own bodies, our hearts, throat, eyes. Every part of our body is conscious and receiving. There is a consistent and constant metaphysics that is going on in terms of interacting with the universe. So when we are able to tap into our own selves into our own consciousness we're then able to have a communication with our own inner selves where we don't need input from external sources to help us carry ourselves 
Developing a communication with oneself is also being aware of the inner dialogue that we have. You know, it's like listening into a conversation that you're having with yourself consistently, moment to moment, from any given, in any given situation, no matter what kind of pressure you're facing or no matter how calm you are within yourself, there's always the presence of an inner dialogue. And if we can tap into cultivating silent, observant self, that in itself is a self-exploration. Point number three, spending a lot of time alone. I think spending time alone with myself would be one of the top ways to cultivate self-exploration, to go deep within ourselves, myself. Travel internally, right? That's the title of this video. Traveling internally, spending time alone are almost synonymous. If you're spending time alone and you so much as even have a semblance of a relationship with yourself, you can then enjoy, start to enjoy your own presence. You can start to feel how it is that your energy signature is when you're just by yourself, without any projections from an external world, without your friends or your peers or your family dictating sort of what it is that you should be feeling or thinking at any given point in time. Spending time alone integrates more deeply into our being who we are. So in essence, the more you spend time alone, the deeper you can go within your own self. And it's like, it's like climbing a staircase. It's like an evolution within your own being when you start to connect with your own self in solitude because you will start to feel, taste, see, approach life very differently from other people. Very differently from even your own self. You'll be able to feel like what am I when I am in front of people versus who am I when I'm all alone? Who am I when there's nobody around me to reflect back at me? What do I find in myself then? What do I see in myself then? That in itself is a whole universe. Point number four. Examining the relationships in your life, the friendships in your life. I found that the more I'm able to ask myself why such and such person is existing in my life, what is the purpose of them existing in my life. The more I understand about myself, it is a very potent tool of self-exploration because we are not going inward in this, in this particular practice. We're seeking to study something from our reflections, aka relationships. Anything that we embody as a form of relationship slash friendship in our personal environment has a very direct correlation to who we are, what we like, what kind of qualities we have as a human being, um, what kind of boundaries we have, what kind of flavors do we enjoy in relationships, what's the kind of textures do we like when we explore ourselves with other people. It's a whole new way of understanding ourselves, which then comes from an informed analysis of our relationships, which is very, very potent. Point number five, journaling. I cannot state enough that I 
totally completely am devoted to a journaling practice since I was a very little girl to find catharsis to find reflection to be able to hear myself you know I always enjoyed the fact that when I wrote in my journal she would just listen to me and then I could write pages down and she would just keep on listening to me and somewhere within that within that practice within that space of journaling my thoughts my feelings just you know page after page enlightenment came and when I say that I mean enlightenment in the form of a solution in the form of a clarity light a feeling of not feeling stuck journaling has always helped me with my mental health with self-exploration with finding catharsis with finding a friend you know I put my journal so close to my heart and it is an extension of my being self-exploration one of the big key factors about self-exploring is documentation are you able to hold notes of who you were an year ago where you were what your thoughts and feelings were compared to right now and I found that in collecting data about your own life you can learn so much about yourself so much so much so much go ahead and give it a try and you cannot tell me that it did not pay you back because that's how amazing documentation is that's how amazing journaling is point number six <laughs> meditating meditating man meditations <laughs> trust me when you close your eyes then you're able to cultivate a space where you can just tune in to your breath tune in to your heartbeat feel the smile on your face feel the tears on your face it's all meditation this is meditation you being able to pay attention to me talking for so long about self exploration is meditation anything is meditation my friend you working on a project that is so dear to your heart is meditation don't let anybody tell you how to meditate devise your own ways just keep seeking what it is that meditation means to you to your own person and it evolves from time to time from place to place from feeling to feeling someday you might feel like lying down and meditating someday you might feel like just sitting down and tuning into your heart someday you might feel like going on a bike ride and tuning into your own thoughts and your own heartbeat meditation is anything that you do consciously even just sitting here and talking to you is meditation for me because I'm so aware in what I'm saying in my being of my breath of my thoughts point number seven sharing your journey sharing my journey I know it has taken me a long time a long 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 time to get to this place not externally remember this entire video is about internal internal life self-exploration in an inner fashion deepening going into the depths of our being and knowing to the core of who we truly are and I've spent so much time alone by myself and my own thoughts doing traveling internally traveling inwardly that at this point in time to be able to create 
create this video, to be able to talk about this to you, to be able to connect my journey with yours. It feels surreal. It feels so incredible. I never had imagined that there's so much power in being able to create your craft and share it. Don't think that you need to go out of your own way, out of everybody else's way to prove something because the way you live your life, the way you choose to exist is your art, is your craft, is your talent, is your skill. Tap into what it is and you'll find out that and start doing it. All right, that's it for today. Comment down below and let me know what are your most favorite ways of exploring yourself, going inward, traveling internally. Please share and I look forward to reading it in the comments. Also let me know if you would like for me to make any specific video about spirituality, anything that you're struggling with, any astrology placements that you would like me to explore, or absolutely anything that comes to your heart. Please feel free to let me know in the comments down below. Thank you so much and I will see you in another video. Bye.